the soil. Praise the name of Jesus. This part of, of the island, Evangelist O'Neill Robinson. So the choir is going to sing and our evangelist will come afterward in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, 
The song says, come, let us worship the Lord. Let us give him the praise. Worship him. Where are the worshipers in the house? Worship him. Give God all the honor. Give him all the praise. Worship him, somebody. Come on. is coming hallelujah keep the worship going worship him worship him worship him praise the name of Jesus we're here to give him the honor we're here to give him the praise the man of the hour is coming as empowered by the spirit our dear brother out of Northampton Shiloh Apostolic Church brother O'Neill Robinson put your hands together give God some praise as he delivers the word Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just lift our hands and magnify the name of Jesus? Can we just take a minute or two and just change the atmosphere? Come on, there's, there must be something to give God thanks for. Is there anybody here with a reason to just lift their hands? Hallelujah. And to just say, Lord, I want to thank you. Hallelujah. I am aware that some persons might be tired. And I am aware that persons are not feeling well. I'm also aware that there are persons here that are stressed out. Persons that have been depressed. But through it all, I want to lift my hands. And I just want to magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 2020 has been a year that is filled with disappointments for a lot of us. A lot of us, hallelujah, from a mental perspective, we are damaged. Persons have lost jobs. Hallelujah. Some persons are going under deep depression. A lot of persons die. Is there anybody here that caught coronavirus and has recovered? Lift your hands. Come on, people. Lift your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. I heard the writer say, hallelujah. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold, their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift, and the cables start to strain, hallelujah, when your anchor trip or firm remain, we have an anchor. church is not going to be normal today let me tell you something when we have people that are grateful to God when we have people that have realized what God has taken us from one writer said when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me my soul cries out hallelujah thank God in me. I wish I have some people. Hallelujah. I wish I have some people who want to express God. I wish I have some people who are grateful today. Some people that have the concept. Some folks don't understand why I'm going to run. Some folks don't understand why I'm jumping. Some folks don't understand why I'm shouting. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated in the house of the Lord. I'm grateful. God, I'm grateful. God, I'm grateful. In spite of the hardness, 
in spite of my surroundings I have salvation I have Jesus and no corona cannot take him away in spite of, of the world crisis in spite of, of the world shutting down I have Jesus no corona glory in spite of the hardness, I have Jesus. Indeed, Elder, Corona have built up my relationship with God. Because when stress was coming, I start to have a little more faith in God. I start to rebuke it right away. I prophet, hallelujah, the atmosphere that I shall not catch Corona. So right away, my faith increased. Then you realize, uh, hallelujah, that some of us start to have a closer connection with God uh, because we start praying more. So when the world is in crisis about Corona, the church is praying more. Persons are forming closer relationship with God. Persons' faith increase. I don't know how I'm going to get to God. But I know you're going to take me through it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Truly this afternoon, I'm glad to be in convention, youth convention, 2020. Hallelujah. A year that is going to be talking about for a long time. A year... That if God don't come for his world, will be written down in history. But I wonder what the church will have as a testimony. Back in the days when you used to hear about old time Christians. And what they used to stand for. 20 years from now, I want the church to be talking about when Corona was about. You have some set up people. That didn't back down in spite of what the devil want to fling on us. Hallelujah. We are prepared to push ahead. Hallelujah. I'm feeling good to be in the house of the Lord. Is there anybody here who is excited to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. You have freedom. The government now allows us to come to church. Hallelujah. A couple months back, we'll have to be on social media with 10 persons. Some people longing for it. Now you are here. This is Liberty Hall. Don't be afraid to jump up on your feet. Don't be afraid to open up your mouth. Because a lot of us load, you know. A lot of us load. But when we come to church, we want to sit down like we are this quiet person. But express yourself. Don't let anybody hold you down. Express yourself. Nothing no wrong. If people start thinking that you're crazy. Hallelujah. Let them call me mad. As long as I'm mad for Christ, I'm all right. Hallelujah. As long as I'm mad for Christ. So when you see me jumping up, don't worry about that. I know what I'm jumping for. When you see me shouting on top of my voice, I know. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I must greet our host pastor along with the ministers here and thank him for accommodating Convention 2020. To our president, vice president, and all the committee members of the National Youth Movement of the Shallow Apostolic Church. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To all our saints, our visiting friends, and our little children, accept holy greetings on behalf of myself and my family. 
my wife Tamara and my daughter Anelia. Hallelujah. We love the Lord. And we greet you in the name of Jesus. Because we are come to accept that the name of Jesus is a strong and a mighty tower. Hallelujah. I heard the psalmist saying, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So there is a secret place in God. The word said that He's going to cover us with His feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy seal and bottle. We don't want any freedy, freedy Christians. We don't want Christians. Who are afraid to proclaim the name of Christ. This is not a thing about when we come to church. It is a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Christianity is not a one day thing. It's not a factor when I get in church and I feel nice. Then I'm going to speak in tongues and I'm going to jump and clap. It's a lifestyle at home, at work, on the street, everywhere I go. I want you to know that I am, hallelujah, I am a child of God. Yes, let's get into the word of God. Youth in Christ. There's a lot of person here. Elder, nothing is wrong if I call you a youth. Oh, that's all right. So Elder is a youth. Everybody is youth. Amen. Some persons don't like that. I say everybody here, we are youths. We are a child of God. And when we, became, when we become children, we have the mentality of a child. Beloved. Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. <laughs> so while it does not yet appear what I am, I'm going to remain a child. I don't know what I'm going to be yet. But all I know is that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. But for now, I'm going to be comfortable as a youth. Empowered by the spirit. <laughs> positioning myself. For revival to take place. And I'm ready to go. No, I don't know who have the slightest idea of how a powerhouse is set up. But I know it has a turbine. Whether it is that the water spins that turbine or whether it is that the windmill, the blades are turned and it generates electricity. And we know that it is a power plant. And we are cognizant of the fact that it has transformers in it. But have you ever realized that you cannot see the current? The main purpose why it is there, you cannot see. But let me tell you something. You want to see what can happen? As you step into your house, you realize that the plug is right there. And by just looking at the plug, nothing is happening. It's just a plug. It is just a plug. Man might look at us as just the church. Men might look at us as just the church. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. When you get an electronic appliance and push it in that socket, if it's a fan, you realize it's demonstrated. The fan starts to spin because it's getting current. So it is okay. We accept that we are nothing at all. We are nothing at all. We have agreed that we have given ourselves away. I heard one writer said, I give myself away so you can use me, Lord. So no glory is for me anymore. Everything that 
you see me do? It's because I am empowered by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Because I'm empowered by the Spirit of God, I realize something. I cannot walk as I used to walk. I cannot talk as I used to walk, talk. I cannot behave as I used to behave. I am not my own. I am simply a representative of the Most High God. I'm empowered by the Spirit of God. Now, being empowered by the Spirit of God, something flashed to my mind. As God rejected Saul, God said to Samuel, Samuel, go down to Jesse's house. And I want you to choose a king. I'm going to show you who to anoint as king. The mere fact that you are filled with the Holy Ghost and is here, you are chosen by God. You are no ordinary person. The Bible classifies us as royal priesthood, holy nation, a peculiar people who are called out to give praise unto Almighty God. So I'm no normal person. Hallelujah. But when everybody came before Samuel and God has rejected all, he said, is there anyone left? They said, yes. I have one left in the field taking care of the sheep. He said, send for him. Hallelujah. A lot of persons here People didn't know that you would have reached here. And I want to encourage you to continue to let people down when it comes to God. When them watch them mouth upon you, let them down. A lot of people think that you wouldn't come out to nothing good. Let them down. Hallelujah. And he anoint. David the story that come I'm going to go slow the story that hit us in Jonah we know the story of Jonah and I want the church to listen carefully and understand we know the story of Jonah and we know how God sent Jonah to Nineveh to preach to Nineveh. Somewhere along the line, Jonah lost his way. He deliberately lost his way. He said, I'm going to go to Tarshish. I'm not going to where God wants me to go. How many times have God spoken to persons here? Say, do this this way. Do this that way. And we disobeyed the voice of God. Jesus, where are you taking me? Hallelujah. How many times have we ignored the voice of God and do the things that we see fit to us? The things that suit me. Forgetting who I am. Forgetting whose I am. Forgetting that I am sold out to Jesus. Forgetting that I'm not my own. That I've been bought with a price. Forgetting that I'm a royalty. Forgetting the lineage to which I came. Forgetting that I'm baptized in Jesus' name. That I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ. But Jonah went his own way. To do his own thing. The Bible said he was so innocent. That when the storm started on the sea. And they woke him up. He said all this trouble is cause of me. Throw me overboard. 
The first step as Christian to get back in line with God is to have a will to accept that you are wrong anytime. You can't see that you have committed wrong anytime that you can realize that you were wrong the church itself will be in problem because let me tell the church something when you're in the church and something happened don't think it's all about elder mando the most of the people let me go to church don't they so hallelujah jesus mm. hallelujah to only realize that he was wrong he said throw me overboard but god will have it his way and god saved jonah and jonah spat out and was on dry land again but i want to get to the church today god sees it fit to give jonah a second chance let us stop whole over one another down. Give them a second chance. Right. Hallelujah. A lot of us love second chances. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine, ten. And we are not willing. Jesus. Hallelujah. Give somebody a second chance. Let them prove themselves. Hallelujah. Let them prove themselves. Hallelujah. So the word of the Lord that Jonah went down to Nineveh and he speak to the people. Save Nineveh. Why are, why is it that miracles start stop happening in church why is it that a lot of persons are not being delivered like first has God changed there are two things that's letting down the church today hallelujah I'm not talking about the entire church but look at it from an individual perspective me i a lot of us find it hard to forgive and in the sense of forgiveness a lot of us find it hard to forgive even our very self Did you know that there's a lot of people here who are being empowered by God who have gotten the gift of the Holy Ghost with gifts and because they can't let go of their past. Let go of your past. Forgetting the past. I start to look forward and I start to press. I start to press for the mark of the high calling. Feel the Hallelujah, Jesus. Ooh. I feel to talk some more. So we struggle with unforgiveness that even our very self we can't forgive and it brings a hamper on our Christian life and it brings you ever hear us here go to church on church heavy it brings a heaviness on the church because right away the spirit of unforgiveness is present Woo. Jesus hallelujah another thing that a lot of youths 
struggle with. Low self-esteem. Jesus, Jesus. God Almighty. If I'm not of a certain caliber, then I don't think I can get up in church. And if the Holy Ghost said, run around the church, no man, a brother Adam's family alone can't do that. Right away, you kill your own spirit. Nobody don't have to say anything to you. But because of the low self-esteem, you start killing yourself. You start to put a damper on your own spirit. I heard a lesson today in Zechariah. Not by might, nor by power, but it's by the spirit of God. It's not about what I have. It's not about what I can do. It is by God's spirit. It doesn't matter the family I grew up in. In a matter if my daddy a thief or my mother a harlot, I am empowered by God. Let go yourself. I wish I had some youth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some optimistic youth that I will not now go on. I start to push myself. I let it go myself. If you can do it, I can do it too. Ooh. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen to me, church. Get about to yourself. Get about to yourself. Let us stop watch one another. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let us start watch one another and start to worship God. Let us give God praise. Let us give God praise. If we want church to come back as church, because God cannot change. And because of that, we start allow other spirits to come in. Here comes covetousness. Here comes bad mind. Brethren, let us get a hold of ourselves. Know what we are about. Know what we are for. If we are God representative, let us represent God to the fullest. Push each other. Hallelujah. So, the word said, we are empowered by his spirit. So being empowered by the Spirit of God. I'm no normal person as I said before. So you realize now that I'm called out special. I am chosen as special. So if I'm special, I need to have the mindset of somebody special. You know what is letting down a lot of us is our mindset. 
We have a limited mind and this is all I can accomplish. Yeah, it's up right here. And we limit ourselves. And even though the Spirit of God is pushing us, we limit ourselves to right here. This is me. But I dare you today to jump up out of your comfort zone and say, God, I surrender to your will and to your ways. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. You want to know when you are growing in Christ? When you start to find yourself, you can rebuke yourself. When you find yourself, you can rebuke your mindset. Say the blood of Jesus, what kind of thought is this? Anytime as a child of God, you reach to that level. Where you can rebuke yourself you're going to have to start a problem hallelujah and after rebuking yourself you start to prophesy on yourself jesus prophesy on yourself Hallelujah. And so therefore we have the authority to speak things into being. But because we are so distracted what the other man is doing and what he might do and what he might do. We forget that we have the authority. Hallelujah Jesus. Now Nehemiah said so build we the wall, and all the walls join together at the half, because the people have a mind to work. The people have a mind to work. I wish to God we have some people, some youths in Christ. With a mind equipped to work for the Lord God. A set of people who have made up their minds to fight. The Bible told me that while the wall was building. You have some Sambalats. You have some Tobias. Who was viewing. Want to destroy the work of Almighty God. Want to tear down the work of Almighty God. But the people. Then as Christians we can boast. Uh, tell me who can stand before us. Uh, when we go in Jesus name. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, we have. We have the victory. We shall have. The victory. Children of God. Let us be renewed by your mindset. Let us be renewed by our mindset. I don't know if you know how powerful your mind is. And let me change it. I don't know if you know how powerful our minds are if we come together. If we come together and start working, having